So if you start, if you just like go like 10 and 0 in your placements and you win the next 20 games straight, then your MMR is going to be just disturbingly high because every like consecutive win that you get while you're like on a win streak, you get even more matchmaking rating, like bonus points almost. That that's just something I've seen happen. I know that's for sure because when you're in a losing streak, it actually goes against you too. Like if you lose like 20 games in a row, like it's significantly worse than losing those 20 games spaced out between wins, if that makes sense. Uh, it like it actually you start losing more and more points because your matchmaking rating is dropping even more significantly. I don't think it's a flat amount your hidden matchmaking rating on a loss. I actually think it it cycles heavily based on your win uh, win streaks and lose streaks. So you will like actually get more hidden matchmaking rating if you're on a win streak. Or lose more if you're on a lose streak, then you will just like you know win lose win lose win lose, or just win win lose win win lose. So there there's some really fucked up things with matchmaking. They changed their algorithm to just like search a wider range. So you will have like rank a rank one like Viper player potentially in the same game as a Diamond Five player, and I think the issue is. It, it ruins the integrity of the ladder because there's just too much uh, difference in skill level between diamond players and challenger players. This guy's just going to e-shove. I can't do much to harass him because I'll take too much damage from autos from him at level 1. And he's about to hit 2 once he kills one more minion. One more melee minion is 2. I did not want to take that e from the bounce when he uses his E to last hit it, so I just chose to Q the minion. Early levels, Castman versus Rise is very much important for you to stay safe since you can't win trades against him. I can't even get that that minion. Unless I had saved my W, I couldn't get it. Auto at once, it's not low enough. This guy's going to early back for tier, and that's one of the reasons why you can win this matchup is because he's not going to continuously pressure you. You actually have a moment of breathing. If he doesn't early buy tier, then he is silly. Because that, that just is wasted time. So he's going to back and get tier really soon. Yeah, he's, he's backing right now. That's just to be expected in this match. Oh, wait. Really? He's staying. Wow, this is stupid. This guy actually doesn't know how to play Rise, probably. Or he's not very experienced. He should have backed on that wave. He might have messed up last hits. Actually, he, he probably messed up last hits and doesn't have enough gold. But he should be backing when he has no mana to get the tier as soon as possible. So I, I don't think he had last hit well enough to get tier, and maybe that's one of the reasons why he stayed. But just for your reference, you need to back and get tier as soon as possible when you're playing Rise. And now that he doesn't have any mana since he was using it too much, I can actually trade well into him. But I know he's going to back soon. So it's not like I can kill him. He's gonna, if he gets low, he's definitely going back to get tier. Right now I can just be okay keeping him in lane with no mana and freely last hitting. Normally I would have to fight for these last hits and lose last hits here and there for bad trades. But because I can't, wow, fuck me. Because I can't, well I've got double his CS <laughs> in this matchup, that should not happen. He doesn't have enough mana to even follow up in a Lee Sin gank. So unless Lee Sin can solo kill me, which he probably can. Or wait, it's Zack. We have Lee Sin. Oh wait, he had enough for that. Can turn this. There we go. Alright, double kill, easy. Oh shoot. That was interesting. Is he going to flash for me? He's going to try to flash on me, probably. Uh, wait, what's happening bot lane? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> what is this game? Uh, hmm. Well... There's so many mistakes both teams are making. I can't capitalize on it as early as I would like with Kassadin, simply because I, I don't have as much kill potential in this champion early as I would with LeBlanc. But, yeah. So their top winner burned TP to save the Zac that was just ganking a lane that he shouldn't have been ganking. I could have flashed away and lived, or in that case, I knew that Lee Sin was coming, so he waited. 
Blasting Wand because we're going Rod of Ages early. Damage portion first so we can kill Rise at six. JJ King, thanks for subbing. Or JK, thanks for subbing. I still have my Flash. A little bit behind in experience because Elaine wasn't in the best spot when all that broke down. But. Minion blocked on that one. Need to get my abilities back up before we can make this work. So you can see the big damage difference now that I have Blasting Wand. Like, getting early damage on Kassadin means everything. You start winning your trades, and then you can actually all in them. If you take TP, you won't be winning a lot of the matchups you should, like against Syndra, because she can just outburst you. But Ignite changes the matchup dramatically. Fuck, I can't. Oh, I had the wrong button pressed. Fuck, dude. I was using my control word and I was trying to spam my refillable. Holy fuck, that was retarded. It got to the point where I was like standing still after the snare because I thought I was lagging since it wasn't using my refillable potion but I didn't have it in the right slot. I always keep refillable on number two. I threw myself off because I didn't move it. I'm almost six. He hit six before me. If we hit six, we just kill him in that same situation because we can actually chase him. But, um... Thank you for letting me have the kill. Leeson didn't even do very much damage there. If I had more health, then it's just we're all in and killing the Rise, since he doesn't have very much magic resist or health yet. Because of the blasting one buy, buy we should just win every trade. It only went poorly because I fucked up when I was trying to use my refillable and wasn't actually doing anything. It's just silly. Need to get another uh, another ward. But I'm also giving commentary, and it kind of fucks me up because I don't think as clearly when I'm trying to think of the best things to say and highlight. I can't say everything I'm doing. It's just not possible. You're doing so many small things, like your movements. I, I could spend the entire stream just talking about why I'm moving the way I am. Like moving away from the minions when he's last sitting just to avoid his E damage when it's splashing. Just here and there, it's like really important. Sidestepping that, not running like straight back. It's really important. So he's getting completely zoned now. This is the part where Kassana just shits on Rise. He's actually dead here, I think. Oh wow, that was a two second snare. I waited to ignite until my Rift Walk was back up, but if he doesn't E and then W, if he EWs, then it's a two second snare. If, it, if it's just a W, then it's a one second snare. I don't know if he's staying because he's getting a jungle gank or he's just stupid. That's the problem with the ladder right now. You don't know what you're playing against. Someone that's just stupid playing in lane, or they're actually really good and they're baiting you for their jungler to come. Normally I'd always just say he's getting a jungle gank because if our Lee Sin is here, he's 100% dead. Yeah, his jungler was in the area. Fuck, he took, oh, fuck dude. It was the worst time for him to do blue because I, I can just kill the Ryze under the turret right now. I guess I'm mistaken. I didn't get my W off on the, the rise. It's still a two-second snare. Fuck me, dude. I was just outside of range to W the rise, and he got his shield up so Ignite didn't kill him. And uh, we are, we're saved in that play because Lee Sin is in the area. But I need to get close enough so my Riftwalk will hopefully do damage, and I definitely need the W to hit. I didn't realize that he wouldn't die, and he got the snare off on me. So if we combo quickly enough, Ryze can't EW me, and we don't get two second, two second snared off of two no skill shot list abilities. But we just insta-kill him there, and then like we the next rift walk will be fine. We don't even have to rift walk again. We can walk out of the turret. But I waited. I got Tyrog Road too quickly and didn't get the W off because he just snared me from too far away. And then Lee Sen saved the play. But, uh. Fuck me, right? 
Okay, we can get Rod of Ages really quickly. And Rise is, he's not even itemizing correctly. If he's behind, he should be getting a Negatron Cloak in this matchup and shouldn't rush CDR boots. I'm only giving him a chance because I'm getting too frisky with these dives. He's so far behind, and it's only going to get worse for him in this matchup. But I also didn't have blue. I, I was kind of flustered because Lee Sin took blue when I was, you know, trying to figure out if we could dive the Rise that had like 20-30% health, and Zach was there, and then I just misplayed the dive mechanically. This is a good play. Lee Sin's very fed. So he's going to probably kill most of them. This just looks like this game is over already. We got... Wait, their jungler just soloed our top laner. Rip. You have to sidestep that last Q. It's happened so consistently. It's just like pattern at that point. Rise is always going to like... As, as he's kiting you, he's going to try to get that last Q in. After he EWQs. I'm waiting for him to use his E. There's a snare. He should be dead. I'm fighting in a minion wave, so it's a little bit scarier. But I'm like keeping an eye on Lee Sin coming in, just like keep the rise interested long enough unless I lag out and don't rift walk this guy's jump he can't kill me here seeing if we could bait him long enough for him to do something stupid Because Lee Sin's also hanging around here still, and if Zach jumps into me, we can chunk him a lot, and he's spamming W, so we're getting E spell cast off. Can probably kill him. This is a iffy buy, but I'll talk a little bit more about why Sork Boots is a better buy on Kassadin over CDR Boots, because you almost always see Kassadin's build CDR Boots, and it's like recommended by most guides to do it. But it actually has to do a lot a lot with uh, how the matchups have changed and how people aren't building as much magic resist in early matchups. Mid lane, they're taking less magic resist for glyphs. They're not even taking like full flat magic resist for glyphs anymore. They're taking CDR, at least 10% per level. So if you're running Sork Boots, you're doing way more damage to them than you would in older seasons on Kastanen because they're, this guy has got 30 magic resist. So Sork Boots plus... Mark, uh, the magic pin marks I have, and the mastery. We're doing almost true damage to him right now, already. And that's crazy for Kastanen, because his base damage is really high, and he does a ton of damage. No, don't take it. If that snare hit, we would take it, though. The snare hit, we'd just go in and combo and kill, and I don't think we'd, we'd die. But bot lane won, and mid lane's under control. We have a huge CS lead. Top lane's dead. I don't think I can get there. He's dead, yeah. Let's cranks. Gonna make it annoying. And also, another reason why CDR boots aren't as good on Cassidy right now is because items like Hourglass and Abyssal will be situational and give you a ton of cooldown reduction. Plus, I'm gonna do Morello second. I'm not doing Lich Bane second, I'm doing Morello, so that's where a lot of my cool introductions come in. And then with this setup, uh, GLP is also really good, but it's really hard for me to get close enough to make use of that Revolver on Rise because of the snare. The two second snare makes it a lot harder. So Rod of Ages just ends up being a better buy than GLP early game. But yeah, GLP, because of early uh, Revolver synergy with your W, you're going to need to get the auto attack off on a lot of champions, and you can. But we just can't do it on Rise, not easily. Because he's going to snare and run with Storm Emitter Surge. And we can't catch him if he's got Ghost up. Not unless we have blue buff. We've got crazy mana. I haven't roamed very much this game because our laners are winning and top lane has been useless. We 
think he just needs to run. This guy's pretty tanky. Uh, GLP is... Is it GLP or is it GPL? I think it's GLP. It's very good on Castanon. It's just more expensive, and like I said, the Revolver is harder to use than a Blasting Wand and more expensive into some matchups. And this matchup in particular is a lot harder to use it into. And I can't remember what champion I was playing against when I built GLP for the first time on Castanon, but the Revolver plus my W just... It took like 30% of his health. Because it's so much burst. We haven't even like ramped up yet on Cassidin. Like once you hit two items, you're just so strong. But they're letting me free farm, and that's really good. We have the most CS in the game. Not like perfect CS, because we've been skirmishing a lot. It's it's a lot more CS than Rise. We've denied him a lot in this matchup, and we've also I think I'll do, rather than get Phoenix Codex just yet, I'm going to get a little bit more mana. But we're going Morello second. Lichbane, I mean, it'll do more damage than Morello, but it's very difficult to proc the Lichbane in a team fight consistently. Uh, you're mostly just like spamming R, Q, E, and Hourglassing in the late game team fights. And so unless you can make really good use of the mid game with Lichbane, it's not as good as Morello, because the extra CDR and the mana restoration you get from getting kills and assists becomes a really big deal later on in the game when you're rift walk you're rift walking like five times in a row so your last rift walk will like make you completely oom but if it kills a champion you can keep casting and maybe kill somebody else dang there was a word here i was wondering why she stopped going this way makes sense so our bot lane's advantage is leaking everywhere, but Lee Sin was also just just stupidly fed from that counter gank med. I mean, we, we would have killed Zac as well if their top lane didn't TP to his blob. And that, that probably should have helped top lane out a lot. Okay. Hmm. I can probably finish Bane. I'm waiting for the right moment, though. Wait for it. Oh! That moment when you kill all the blobs at once. Alright, Darius is back alive, but... Lucky for me, we got that nice flank off after our team threw. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't be worded. No, we shouldn't recall here. Yep, it is worded. You can kill him with the next ability. That works. Just never assume, like, <laughs> there was a big fight that broke out there. Just never assume that they weren't just throwing wards around to get vision. And they were. We got the Morello now. We got this is a huge school introduction spike. The early game is like, you know, you get the scaling going on if you want Rod of Ages, or you have the early game with GLP. Sword Boots also give you a better early game for the reasons why I described. So like, your lane opponent probably isn't running as much magic resist as they used to. They're running the 10% CDR for glyphs. I'll just kill, kill her, probably. Free low, baby. AD carries in 2017. Dealing with Kassadin now. Kassadin beats Rise, beats all squishies, just about. Oh, that's gonna feel nice. When the Scion ult hits directly, that's when you feel like you should play Scion. It's hard to hit it directly, they almost have to run into it, but it feels so good. 
graphically feel like the alpha support when that happens. That feeling alone is one of the reasons why I still play this ion support. It's just that feeling when you hit that fully charged up bolt down down mid lane. Slowed a bit. What stunned me there? Some random stun hit me. Just just focus on. Fuck, rip block. Turn around. I'm just waiting for cooldowns, especially your E. Your E is like a big part of your burst, and it has CC in it too. So, casting in, you're like weaving in and out and just waiting for cooldowns sometimes. In that position, like we know we're gonna turn it on them, but we're waiting for them to get drawn into us and wait for maybe the R to reset so we can rift walk enough. <sighs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think this is a good game to get even more magic pen in. <laughs> Double pin. They are not not building that much magic resist. We're gonna be doing hundred percent true damage to rise. No doubt. Like, we're doing overkill penetration to rise at this point. And doing true damage to Vayne, doing true damage to Blitzcrank. Maybe not Blitz anymore. It depends on his masteries and runes. Because he's going to get magics per level. And I won't be doing true damage to the Darius or Zac. But the penetration will still help since they don't have more than one magic resist item. When the penetration hits. When you penetrate. It's also really easy to last hit on Cassidy because of your W. It just passively gives you a lot of flat damage on hit. So lasting into the turret early on. It's just a science. Fuck! I couldn't rip walk her E again because I got stunned at the very end. Oh man. That was actually an easy double kill. At least. Because rift walk or my E ability, the next one would have killed just so many targets. But I went in too early. I thought I would one shot the vein. I think she had summoner heal. Ugh. Alright. Let's make this nice and clean. That would be a good instance where hourglass would come in handy. Like, in that, that very same team fight, if we have Hourglass, we for sure kill probably all of them. Because I go in, and then I don't have anything up. That's where Hourglass is perfect, is when you go into a play like that, and you don't quite kill them, and you don't have an escape tool since you Rift Walked in, so you Hourglass, and then 
while you're hourglass, you're getting your force pulse back off cooldown, and you use that as soon as you come out and probably kill two people or rift walk away. So would have been a great instance of hourglass. I kind of played it as if I did because uh, I was kind of arrogant and we're really far ahead, but it was 2v5 or 2v4. It's pretty hard to win when they have crowd control. You have to you have to kite them for sure, but it's like spamming E. Couldn't quite get it off because I was stunned by something at the very end, like Zack Ult or something, Blitzcrank E. Just something hit me. CC'd by something. Holy shit. Huh, that didn't kill the Darius. I don't know why either. Hmm. We need to stop throwing. I don't have Hourglass yet, so I can't go into that fight. It's so chaotic. I can't get to the vein without getting knocked up by one of their tanks. They are running triple tank. Darius, Blitzcrank, and... Their team comp is actually disgusting. I could kill Blitz, but I wouldn't have an out. Dang, I used my E already. They had Redemption? <sighs> Do not dive them. They have a better comp. <laughs> they got Vayne and Rise. We, we have to split them up in the fight for me to kill them. Otherwise their tanks are gonna sit on me before I have Hourglass and we'll probably lose the game. But, yeah. We're, we're in danger of throwing now because they have a really good late game with Rise and Vayne. Got that guy's flash. Nice. Kasten's not very good at killing tanks. That's where he definitely has some trouble. I need to go for the squishies, and it needs to be enough for our team to win the fight if I kill their squishies. This is stupid. These skirmishes keep happening, but they're getting better positioning. Getting so many flashes. They're just gonna kill that guy. Get another rip walk off. Hmm. Team is playing really dumb now. They keep just going to the closest person and fighting. And I have to fight really carefully since I'm a melee champion. If I go in, it's easy to get stuck in the fight. And they're getting stuck into the fight. <sighs> Fuck, dude. We're going to late game against Rise and Vayne. This should have been such a free win. And it still can be, but Lee Sin and our science support are going full retard. Like, full retard. Like, go in, not use any abilities, die retard mode. It's okay. We can win. Play smart. Stop going for super chase fights. I have Hourglass now, so I can go in like they are and actually kill everybody, but... Pre-Hourglass, these fights are just garbage for Cassidyn. Vayne's next to Adarius and Zack. So if she... I can almost one-shot her, but if she gets the slightest bit of utility from Redemption, face of the mountain, or heal, I, I go in and die to just her. Not 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 even the tanks. But uh, the tanks will definitely be a huge problem. We get blue, we'll be at 16. We're going to be full CDR, late game Cassidyn here. Like one second rift walk, just about. So I get this. 1.2 second rift walk. The dream is real. Okay. No, 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 no. Whoa. All right, that was actually good. Start the fight off with Rise dead. I'm gonna wait till this drops and just start rift walking like crazy. So I'm gonna need as many rift walks as I can at lower cost to catch them and still have enough mana to fight. 
Okay. Baron, Baron's a good call. Since we're drawing them into us and splitting them up, probably. We didn't do Baron before because we didn't want to throw it. They got Baron by a steal or something when they're all alive. I interrupted his jump. Fuck, this is kind of crazy. He's, he's not in the pit. Fuck, I don't have enough mana to fight her. But we got the Baron. All I wanted to do when I rift walked over was stop the Zack jump, which I did with my Q ability. Didn't rift walk, I could have stolen that kill. I just want to conserve as many charges, keep them low, so we can maybe fight as soon as they're out of position under the tower. But yeah, I couldn't even rift walk to finish Thane. She, she had summoners up and just wasted too much on there. The jungler. I think late game, if, if Vayne gets magic resist like Hex Drinker, she actually will counter you. Because <laughs> she'll kill you in three hits. Like she gets lifesteal and Hex Drinker, Maw or something. Damn, that almost killed me. I'm at four stacks now. Blitzcrank's on this side. I'm gonna use this blast cone just to save Rifwalk stacks. Right, I'm going for it. I'm burning everything. Oh shit! Ah, the crowd control. I tried to go in, but it was the moment Zach was point blank E and then Ari and, and then Lee suicided to try to make it work. Fuck crowd control, dude. Tanks are super annoying. Get get this. This could go to super late game with that. Uh, pregnant chipmunk, two months in a row. Majestic yellow. Thank you for subbing. Also. This is not already late game enough. Huh. Okay. Last inhib. Please three inhib this. No more stupid. No more stupid. I was rift walking just to try to rift walk over the Zac, because I can rift walk so quickly, 1.2 seconds, but it was the moment that he was eating point blank, then ulting, so it's like locked down. Can't get past can't get past the carry that I want to or the tank to get to the carry. I just have two carries that I need to kill, and then the fight is one. Problem is if we go two ham for it. We're just like, you know, not winning faster than we could, or we're throwing long enough that they can catch up and win. They're just sitting there waiting for a Blitzcrank hook. Do not go there. I know what Lee Sin's thinking. I want to walk up to this wall and see if I can die. Their hook's on cooldown. I can catch Vayne. I really got condemned into that. That's so depressing. Killed her. That sucks. I didn't even think about the turret placement condemning me. I thought I would one shot her, but just short of damage to one shot her. Maybe with like void staff we could have. Because I was thinking I'd kill her before she can do anything. And then uh, we just go into the next target. 